I'm Justin Mott and welcome to my home in Hanoi, Vietnam. And actually, sorry, I forgot something downstairs. Let me go pick that up. Oh, that is not good on the knees anymore. I'm not good at that move. I'm Justin Mott and welcome to my home in Hanoi, Vietnam. And today I'm going to talk about the five most influential pieces of gear throughout my entire career as a photographer. This is a fun game to play. I came up with it last night over a couple glasses of wine during the holiday here. I thought it would be fun also for you guys to play this game at home or play it in the comment section. So without further ado, here is the five most influential pieces of gear that I've used throughout my entire career as a photographer. <laughs> As always guys, don't forget to check out my online store at justinmott.com where I've got one-on-one -on -one sessions, I've got presets that will not make you a better photographer, but they will add some pop to your images, and I've got prints for sale with free shipping worldwide. So today this is going to be fun, uh, also I'm still tweaking the YouTube studio here, I've made some adjustments here, i got this nice lantern above me, hopefully you guys are noticing that light, good old accent light over here, I'm stepping up my game, stepping up my game in the new year, I know. I know, that little reflection there is not great, but I've got a window there, I don't feel like putting a blanket up there, I'm going to change this, I'm going to put one of my nice maps there, it's going to be nice, we're getting there. Things are improving, I want to improve this channel for you guys, I've got my nice little setup here, my nice little area to film in, so let me know what you think about this lighting setup, I know you're not here for this kind of stuff, but I just thought it'd be fun to share it with you guys. Also, for those of you that haven't checked it out yet, I just did a full review about this little guy here, the Insta360 Go 2, this is going to be my new Go 2 vlogging camera. I'm going to be playing around with vlogging. Most of it will be photography related. I'll do some other things with it as well, but I'll be taking this little guy to Kenya with me. I'll be doing a lot more vlogging. So check that out. Did a review about the little camera and also got my first vlog coming out this Wednesday, which might be actually before I launch this video here. So enough about that. Let me talk about the five most influential pieces of gear that I've used throughout my entire career. So this would be a combination of lenses, cameras, software, and hardware as well. So number one on my list dating back to about 2002 was the purchase of my first ever laptop. It was a 2000 to MacBook, or it might have been called an iBook. I think it was called a MacBook. Uh, all white, very easy to get dirty. I mean, I dirty that thing up very quickly, but that was kind of the start of my long-term love-hate relationship with Apple products. I mean, that's kind of where it started for me. What a huge influence on my life, what a huge influence on my photography career. I mean, I've done all my editing on Apple products. I've had countless numbers of MacBook Pros, countless numbers of iMacs through the years spent like way too much of my income on Apple products, but it's not just that. I also have I've had just about every single iPhone, an iPad, I have a HomeKit, EarPods, I mean, I'm locked in. I'm locked in in this love-hate relationship with Apple. Sure, a couple times in my life I strayed. I think I've had like two Android phones in my life, but always came back to Apple. Maybe one time I flirted with the idea of a Microsoft like tablet thing, but never went that way. Never fully committed, never fully left. It was like slight little episodes of cheating on Apple, but but that's it. I, I, I cheated twice, I looked another time, but for the most part I've remained within the Apple ecosystem and it all started there with the purchase of that MacBook. And that was like when I first started getting into digital photography as well, so that was a lot of fun. That was like the first time I was like, oh, I could shoot with my digital camera, I could load the pictures into the laptop, and I could like send emails, I could send my mom like a picture, and I could look at my pictures. It was revolutionary to me. So that's number one on my list, the 2002 MacBook. Okay, number two on my list is my first ever digital camera, and that was the Canon Digital Elf, the two megapixel beast with that tiny little LCD screen. Now, I had started falling in love with photography earlier than that with my first camera ever, which was a Canon Rebel, I believe, but the digital camera really opened up a whole new world to me, and you know, connecting that with the MacBook at the time, being able to look at my files on my laptop, it was like, oh, for those of you out there that have been doing this forever, you're like, what's the big deal? I'm like, well, that was a big deal back then. That was amazing to me. And be able to have that tiny little compact camera to travel around the city. I was living in San Francisco. It was, it was a great way for me to explore the city, a great way for me to explore my creativity, but just learning about the city and different neighborhoods as well. Kind of where I improved my photography skills the most, and it's where I really fell in love with digital photography. So number two on my list is the Canon Digital Elf. And another little fun thing about that camera was it's very sentimental to me as well because my family all chipped in. I was bartending at the time. I'm just barely surviving, living paycheck to paycheck in San Francisco, which is a very expensive city, and 
you know, they all chipped in and got it for me for my birthday, so that was, you know, very sentimental to me. So, aww. Number three on my list is a little bit further on in my career, actually when I was just sort of launching my career out here in Vietnam. And on that note, a couple of you have asked me, like, how did you get started in Vietnam? Why did you start your career in Vietnam? Why do you live in Vietnam? So I think I'll do like a whole separate episode about that. If more of you are interested, let me know in the comment section. I'll do a whole episode about how I ended up in Vietnam and how I started my career here in Vietnam. Uh, so number three on my list was right when I launched my career, right when I moved out here, right when I started working for the New York Times as an assignment photographer. And that piece of equipment is the Canon 35mm 1.4 L series lens. That was my first red circle lens. I was like, ooh, very, very expensive for me at the time. Still rather expensive lens, but that's where I fell in love with 35 millimeter as a focal length. But really that lens was so much more to me. It helped me define my style as a photographer. Right before that, I did a workshop with a very famous conflict photographer named Gary Knight. And I had all the lenses. I had like the 7200, the 2470. It was just like physically and mentally like weighing me down. And he's like, why don't you try to shoot with a prime? Try it out. And I was like, what do you mean? Don't I need all these giant lenses? He's like, Try it out. And I was doing a lot of documentary work, doing personal projects, but also doing assignment work. So I ditched all that gear. I bought my 35 1.4 and I shot almost an entire year's worth of assignments for the New York Times and other magazines all around Southeast Asia with just that setup. I had a Canon 5D at the time and the 35 1.4. So it really helped me define my style as a photographer. It made me move more. It made me think more. It made me like think less about all that other equipment and just be more focused on one focal length. And also just physically didn't weigh me down as much as all that other gear. So that lens in particular is the lens that made me fall in love with the 35 millimeter. It's the lens that really I kicked off my career as an assignment photographer with so at number three is the Canon 35 1.4 L series lens. Number three on my list is the Leica M10D. As a lot of you guys know out there, this has been my favorite camera. This is my go-to camera for my personal projects and my assignment work. This is the camera right here. This is the Leica M camera without an LCD. This is a camera I bought a few years back when I wanted to get back to my roots as a documentary photographer, back to my roots as a minimalistic photographer who only goes out with, like I said earlier, that one camera and that one lens. Not only did this camera represent me going back to my roots as a photographer, slowing down more, working on personal projects, but it also, it also started a new chapter of my life and it pivoted my career going into wildlife photojournalism. So when I bought that Leica M10D, I bought it just before I kicked off my personal project, Kendrick Gardens, and I used it for the first ever chapter of that project, documenting the last two northern white rhinos left in the world. Took that camera, took a 35 millimeter, the Leica 35 millimeter, now my favorite lens, and I went, to, I went to Kenya and I just had so much fun using that system. So yes, it was a very important time in my life, represents a huge pivot in my life, but also I just really enjoyed that experience of not having that screen, of, of not looking constantly at the pictures, of having a very minimalistic, simple camera that I turn on, not worrying about upgrades, not worrying about getting lost in a menu system, just back to basics as a photographer, back to telling stories as a photographer. Of course, the quality of that lens and that camera is amazing too, but it was also just the aesthetic of having something lightweight with me, Having a camera that doesn't, again, physically weigh you down, easy to just take out with you, something you wanna have on you at all times. Aesthetically, yes, it's a beautiful camera. Yes, it's very expensive, but it was well worth the purchase and it's now my favorite camera and my go-to camera for assignments and my personal work as well. So number four on my list is the Leica M10D. Number five on my list is actually a piece of software and that is Photo Mechanic. A lot of you guys have probably never even heard of Photo Mechanic. I've been using Photo Mechanic since early, since the early 2000s when I was at school at San Francisco State. It's not an editing software like Lightroom or Photoshop. It's not for toning your images, it's for organizing your images. But I've been using that program forever. I still use it to this day. It's my go-to software for organizing and tagging all my images. So anytime I load in, you know, anytime I'm back from a shoot and I load in my images, I need to get my first selects out of the way. That's what I use to organize them. That's what I use. That's the program I use to resize my images. So when I want to resize for the web at a watermark, it's just super, super fast. There's been no lag. Yes, Lightroom's fine for that as well, but I've just always used Photo Mechanic. It's very, very dear to me, very nostalgic to me. And I used to use it all the time and still do use it for all my assignment work. So anytime I'm doing batch captioning, keywords, headlines, things like that for all my editorial work, it's just fantastic software for that. It's really, really easy to use. It keeps all your images really organized. It just saves you a ton of time. It hasn't changed a ton through the years, but that's not a bad thing. Like the Leica, it's not a bad thing. It's good that it stayed the same. Simple and easy to use and just very efficient. I, a lot of people have never heard of it. Most of the photographers that use it are editorial photographers. It's perfect for anyone doing assignment work. Great for batch captioning, individual captioning, metadata, all that kind of stuff. It's just absolutely perfect for that. I've, I've been using it for like 15 years. So Photo Mechanic is number five on my list.
So that's it, that's my list. Let me know what you guys think. I will throw two honorable mentions in there that I didn't put in there, but I really came close to putting them in there because they're important piece of equipment in my career. Uh, one would be Lightroom, but I didn't want to put two softwares in there. I thought that would be kind of like ridiculous. But Lightroom, I've been using forever. It saved me a ton of time, do all my basic toning with it, but I just thought Photo Mechanic would be a little more interesting because a lot of people hadn't heard of that. But Lightroom, yeah, huge part of my career. I've been using it since I started. Awesome piece of software. You can do so much with it. So yes, Lightroom gets an honorable mention. And the next honorable mention, which probably also could have made the top five, I'm not sure which one I would have bumped there, would be the Canon 5D Mark II. I mean, that was like, everyone overuses this word now. Like, oh, that camera, like, that was a revolutionary camera. Oh, that was a game changer. People say that all the time. That camera actually at the time, the Canon 5D Mark II, was actually a, like for real game changer. That was the first digital SLR, like the first mainstream digital SLR. Maybe there was another one, but that was like the first one that everyone, that really caught everyone's eye that could also shoot video and like really good quality video. And Vincent LaFerre made it quite famous for his little, his little trailers and stuff like that. Not only was it a game changer in the fact that like what it could do, but it just, it made, it just like clicked something a lot of photographers' brains. Like, wait, I could shoot video too. And yeah, I know a lot of you cinematographers out there are going to roll your eyes at this one, but you know, it did. It really opened up that possibility. A lot of photographers, like, that was what was holding them back. Like, oh, all the gear and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, well, now this camera can do both. Now I can make it easy. Now it's just, like, not that different than my still camera. It's not so intimidating. That's, like, one of the few cameras throughout the course of history that, like, actually, like, changed the way photographers think. Like, it really, really did. We were all like, wait, I could do video. Now I know not a lot of you can do it well. Not a lot of us do it well, but... It did, it opened up the possibility for that. It was a revolutionary camera at the time. Uh, the buzz about that camera was just crazy. I remember when I bought it, how exciting it was. I shot a lot of video with it, opened up the door for me, got me a lot more of assignments because I could shoot stills and video. So like that, probably should have made the top five, but I didn't put it in there today. That was an amazing camera. So that's my list for today. Those are five pieces of equipment that have changed my career as a photographer. It's been a fun experience to go through, a little trip down memory lane. I'm sure you guys have some thoughts on the gear that I mentioned. You have some thoughts about gear in your own. So I encourage all of you guys out there to put in the comment section your five pieces of equipment that have been game changers throughout your entire career. So play it at home. It's a fun little game. It's a fun little game to play with your fellow photographers, with your friends, or just play by yourself. Five most influential pieces of equipment throughout your entire career. Those are mine. We'd love to hear yours. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to have a wonderful day.